Hey Indie Moguls, Russell here with my director of photography from the last few weeks of programming, Chris Knight. Hi, how you doing? Chris was the DP for the Angel of the City shoot that you guys have been watching the last few weeks. If you haven't checked those out yet, definitely go check it out. It's a five episode series. I really enjoyed putting it together. I hope to get to do more like that in the future. A lot of you were asking after watching the episodes what equipment we were using. And so since Chris owns most of it, I was gonna have him walk us through what was used on this shoot. Little tour, huh? Yes. All right, uh, this, uh, this is the audio setup. Uh, this is a shotgun mic. Audio Technica, I think it's AT835B mic. The softy here is from B&H. This uh, shock mount, actually, this one I got from Best Buy for like $4. It's actually the best one I ever had. The cable was eight bucks from Best Buy. Um, the mic stand itself is not a boom stand. Boom stands are very expensive. Um, I don't really have that much money, like everyone else, so I just got a mic stand and ripped the bottom off, and uh, it actually works out pretty good. The way I attached the Zoom H4n was um, one of those little mini tripods, they're like a dollar, you can get them anywhere, but try to get the one that bends, because uh, the mic stand itself is hollow inside, so you can just jam it in there and wrap it around, and also use the other end that doesn't fit to hold the cable down, which is pretty convenient. All right, this is the Optica slider. I got this from B&H. I actually went there and picked it up. It comes in a little box, not little box, actually a long box. You look like you're carrying a gun when you're walking around the city with it, but I would just order it online. What I do use occasionally um, is, this is the light stand to my soft box. When you do buy a um, three-phase lighting kit, uh, you know, you get these stands, of course, with a quarter-inch screw on the top, which is very convenient because, as you can see, they will like, give you a million different sizes of uh, threads, but it allows you to use the slider at a different height, which is very cool. This is the Delkin car mount. I got this at B&H. I think it was $40. We used this in a couple scenes. And, uh, yeah, that's that. This is the shoulder rig that I got from Amazon from Fancier Studios and comes with a follow focus. This part actually goes on to your lens. It's not supposed to be there. I just put it there when I don't use it. But uh, everything comes with this uh, with this kit. They do sell just the um, matte box by itself. Uh, they do sell the shoulder rig by itself and the follow focus by itself. This is the Glidecam 2000 Pro. This is the old version. They do make a new one, Glidecam 2000 HD. Everything new is HD at the end. I don't know why. These things are very complicated with with DSLRs, very complicated to balance. But once you get it, lock it down and never touch it again. This is the Pro-Am uh, jib. It's the eight foot jib with the four foot extension. It's awesome, I gotta say. Uh, you really don't need those thousand dollar cranes and stuff. This thing with the motorized pan head, uh, it's Hollywood, man, I gotta say. But one thing, it does not come with the tripod. They get you on that. The tripod itself is 50 bucks. This thing does mount to standard tripods. I would use an expensive tripod because uh, the weight that this holds, uh, just for a DSLR Canon T2i, the weight is 20 pounds to counter it. So it's it's it gets heavy. For the monitor, it's not a monitor. It's a DVD player. I got it from Radio Shack. Um, it's actually pretty convenient. Only one thing, when you do buy these, make sure you have an in-out line. Don't just get one that's, you know, an outline. This is some of the lights that we had. This is an LED Neewer CN160. On the back, you can get a Sony replacement battery, uh, non-brand name, which makes this a lot brighter than using just standard batteries. Those standard batteries die out in like, I think two to four hours. We've never had this die out on a shoot yet. The stand that, that this is on, Russ got three of these stands for $70. These lights aren't really good for the daylight kind, uh, but they work great for street lights. We use these in the gas station scene. And I gotta say, these things were pretty bright. This next light I got from Home Depot. I'm not even sure how much it was. It wasn't that expensive. I think it was like $30, $40. This is also really good for sunlight. 
you can set this up outside a window and shoot indoors at night and it'll look like daylight. If you're just starting out and you don't have much money, you know, there's a Home Depot at every corner now, so you just, just convince your parents to get one of these and you're pretty much good to go. It does get hot, I must say. Uh, I did a shoot in the winter with these and we were all huddling around it keeping warm. This light is a softbox. Um, not too complicated to put together. The directions they give you are horrible, so you kind of just got to figure it out yourself. After I put the softbox itself over the light, put the two rods on the top, bring the material back over, hook the two top ones first. You'll never be able to do all four of them at the same time. Uh, then when the two top ones are secure, put the rods from the, from the front in and then out and then lock it down in the back with the holes. That was all of Chris's equipment. The one thing that I was actually responsible for bringing was the camera, which was the T3i. On the live show, new and younger filmmakers are always asking me which camera they should go with when they're getting their first camera. T3i is always my pick. So that's all of the equipment, but the episode's not over. Hey Indie Mogulers, Russell here at Union Square in Manhattan, right out in front of the New York Film Academy where I went to film school. Ah, memories. Actually, I went to the other campus down in Princeton. Broadway, but it, I mean, my orientation was here. Today's episode is the season finale of Friday 101 to go along with the season finale of Indie News that's coming up on Monday. And when the new Indie Mogul season starts next month, you'll find I'm not doing a show on Fridays. I'm doing a show on Mondays, because that's right, I'm joining Griffin on Indie News for Mondays. Now what's gonna happen to Fridays? It's getting loud, one second. So all the stuff that you've enjoyed on this show, oh my God. What that's going to leave Fridays open for is more things like Home Without Marlecta. It's going to give us more time to do things like the on-set experience like we had for the last five weeks, which is honestly the most fun I've had doing anything in quite some time. And I'd also like to hear from you guys. What kind of segments would you like to see on Fridays? And I don't mean like what topics do you want to see covered. What are some segment ideas that you guys have? Because we're going to be throwing anything we can on Fridays to really mix it up and give you as much original content as we can. Really, bus? Really? Well, what else would you like to see? Be creative, think up segments, say what you like, and maybe it'll get added to our list of ideas for those days. I'd love to hear what you have. Put those in the comments below. I'll see you in season three. Maybe Monday. Check out this week's Indie Mogul programming featuring Griffin meeting the Final Cut King on Indie News, this past week's live show, and another supersized Mogular made playlist featuring a great mockumentary called The Don'ts and Do Nots of Film, a Star Wars opening crawl tutorial, and a short thriller from Tailored Films. Also, I made a cute pet video, and I'm not ashamed to admit it. But cats are yesterday's news. Ferrets are the cool new thing the kids are into these days. Check that out too. I'll see you for Indie News Season 3.